We have two red AKV Raptors. We're shooting on one right now. We've got the free fly Ember 4K at over 1,000 frames per second. Komodo X's. We've got RA lenses, Zeiss lenses, Atlas lenses, Rehouse vintage lenses to stress test this machine. I don't want to tell you how much is on this table. This could afford a very nice mansion in some neighborhoods across America. What's up guys? Today I am doing something very, very special with you. We're White Box Studio in Singapore and Apple has, of course, they just released the new Mac Studio, the M2 Ultra. The one I have on hand is a 24 core CPU, 76 core GPU, 120 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage. This is pretty much not 100% maxed out, but it's almost there. Now at WWDC, Apple is touting this as the most powerful machine they have done today in terms of the chipset, right? So they were saying anywhere from 22 streams of 8K footage, After Effects and different uh, 3D modeling and all that kind of stuff. So this is the guy, runs White Box Studio, Peter, AKA Lost Truma. Alex, walk us through what do you do for on a daily basis here? So we do a lot of uh, heavy 3D um, animation with our rendering capacity and a lot of kind of lighting texturing. Do also a lot of heavy After Effects okay. animations from uh, 2D to kind of like 2.5D, mm -hmm. uh, compositing, VFX, tools editing. So you have Mac Studios as well. Mm -hmm. You have the M1 version, the M1 Max, M1 Ultras. Yeah and a variety of other machines, right? Mm -hmm. So you never tried, well, obviously the M2 Ultra is pretty new. Not yet. Excited to try one of these out? Definitely. We're gonna have to give that our role without some of the footage that you do. And then Peter, walk us through what you do. Um, mostly I just like to have fun. <laughs> uh, no, I, I moved in a month ago to uh, the studio with Alex and I have mostly cameras and lenses and I rent them out to people who need it. And production houses as well. He's, yeah. he's a very modest guy. Most of this, is Peter. Peter is a very, you're an avid fan of cinematography. That's why we have Ari and Zeiss and, and Atlas. So we're going to shoot AK-120. We've got a basketball here. We're going to do some dribbling. We're going to do something thousand frames per second, 800 frames. Dumped all this into some crazy timelines. And like, how long is that average project for you? Roughly, it would be about uh, a half an hour we're working on episodes. Okay. But um, most of the work that we do is heavy CGM 3D and does like 50 seconds, that's seconds for commercials. Well, I know a lot of the work you're doing is kind of proprietary and you can't kind of hush hush about the project you're doing. So maybe we could put together a timeline that's about a half hour long, kind of what you're doing. Yeah. Multiple streams, rendering, see how much it can handle it, various different editing capabilities, stress test this bad boy. Let's get down to it. So as we saw from the sample footage there, we had some fun in the studio. Now we're not trying to create any sort of cinema. This is not Wes Anderson. It's not Martin Scorsese. We're throwing a basketball around. We're having some fun with the free fly. We're shooting AK-120 out of the Red V Raptor. High quality 8K as well. We're just trying to maximize the footage to really stress test this machine. Now I didn't show you everything we shot because I didn't want to bore you, but you get the gist of what we were trying to do with it all. Now here's the thing, obviously, I saw a lot of the benchmarks that you've seen on YouTube and various different reviewers out there, and even from Apple's own website. And I said, okay, fine, let's stress test this. Big thanks to Alex once again and Peter for helping me with this. By the way, we're gonna be talking to Alex in just a bit. He was using this machine for After Effects Cinema 4D, real world usage, and he's gonna tell us his thoughts on that. But I wanted to get away from the benchmarks that we saw in other reviews out there. They're a good starting point in terms of what this machine can do, but nothing beats real world usage. It's like getting a car for 24 hours and deciding that you can give a full review on it. You can't. You gotta drive it for a period of time. You gotta understand the nuances of the machine, what it can handle, what it can't. And that's why I wanted to spend some time with this Mac Studio M2 Ultra. As a matter of fact, I'm recording this part of the video 
three weeks after the fact because I wanted to edit more videos on this, some 8K, some 4K for my channel to get an idea, even photos as well. By the way, I have a separate video coming out for photography out there. So if you're into that, check out on my channel because that will be coming up very, very soon. But nonetheless, let's talk about this. I decided to stress test this. I created about a 50 minute timeline and I just stacked it, 30 streams. I did not compress it. This is 8K coming out of the Red V Raptor, the Ember Free Fly, as I mentioned. And I just loaded up there, 30 streams, and it played back without skipping. No drop frames, it played it back. Now, I said, that's impressive. Apple's code quoting 22 ProRes, we went 30 with 8K Red Raw. What about if we decide to render this the H.264. I mean, that's really compressing it. As a matter of fact, the file that I was going to get out of this thing was around 96 gigabytes after it's all compressed. So that gives you an idea of how much, how big this fi these files were. That took over five hours. I, I don't have an exact time for you guys, to be honest with you, because I sat here for the first hour and I'm like, this is not going anywhere. <laughs> it's taking some time. And rightfully so. That is a lot of footage more than most people will ever use. But again, I was stress testing this machine. So what I did is I ran it on QuickTime, just screen record. I had to run and go about my day, I had meetings, I had jobs I had to do. I came back, the file was done, but it took over five hours. So again, in the real world, you're not gonna do that, but I was actually trying to really render something versus letting a benchmark test telling me what it would render. And it did the job. Now, even like editing YouTube videos here, when I was doing that a lot over the past few weeks, it handles everything with ease. There's nothing really that hiccups this machine, okay? And I'm trying various different cameras from, you know, shooting a medium format because the GFX 100S can shoot 4K video with that. I was you shooting an 8K with the uh, Nikon Z9. Red, again, I was trying different camera sources to see what this machine could handle and what it couldn't, and it eats up everything. Now, you could say, well, Bobby, a PC can do that as well too. I could spec out a PC and it would be cheaper than the Mac Studio M2 Ultra, and it can do all that, plus I can game. And I would say, okay, sure. You could do that if you look spec versus spec, but there's a couple of variants here that we gotta talk about. First and foremost, the chipset. SOC chipset, the M chipset from Apple. So far, Intel or AMD has not been able to replicate what Apple has done with this. And I've talked to my friends over at Asus and they have said the same exact thing to me. They're very close with their chipsets they're developing with Intel, but they're not quite there yet. In terms of power and performance, these are really hard to beat. And especially when you're talking about the size of this device, right? This is a cube. A PC tower is like this, multiple fans and this and drives and graphics cards and all that stuff. And yeah, you can get a Mac Pro and you can do all that too, or some of it at least, because it's all kind of internally built onto the, the motherboard. But nonetheless, what Apple's able to do in this machine, in this size, is impressive design, engineering, that does cost money. That is R&D. Yeah, you could put a plastic box and put all that stuff inside of there and, you know, spec for spec, you could get very close to this. But do you get the ecosystem? Do you get the OS? Do you have the SOC chipset that is the same as what Apple's got? No, you don't. So while this is priced at a premium, granted, I understand that. I wish it was cheaper myself because I would love to afford one. I have to give credit where credit's due. This machine does what it needs to do in terms of productivity it handles it with ease. Obviously, what are the other likes that I like on this? First and foremost, more ports. This is something I always talk about. I even mentioned it in a video I did for Geek Culture. I, when I have the MacBook Pro, the M1 Max, I love that machine, it's fantastic. But I wish for a Pro machine it had more ports on the side of it. I always ask for more ports. Apple doesn't like ports, but I think more ports are a necessity, especially if you are a Pro user. And Apple's added more ports on this. Now, you know, for the most part, they're Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 respectively, so that adds another ability to this machine, which is really nice to have because I have two Thunderbolt 3 drives here. I have a card reader. Then I have my G drive, which is Thunderbolt 3 as well. I try to go Thunderbolt as much as possible because of the data transfer rates, but it is what it is. I know it's an expense, but again, if I want to use these as scratch disks and I don't have the space internally, I'm gonna talk about that. That's where these drives come into play. So speaking of internal storage, this is where I feel Apple's kind of missed the boat a little bit with the Mac Studios. I would say minimum for a Mac Studio, you're paying the price. You would you'd hope Apple would give you a little bit more storage, would be four terabytes minimum. I would recommend 
invest in the RAM because you can't upgrade it after the fact. That's one of the downsides of this machine and also get more internal storage. Now, yes, you can use external drives. I do that as well, but they're not as fast as working internally on the machine. I use the Samsung X5 Thunderbolt 3 drive, right? This has been out for a number of years and it's still one of the fastest external drives on the market. As fast as it is, does not match the internal speeds of the Mac Studio M2 Ultra. Is it a big difference between an M2 Max when you're really pushing it and rendering, you know, editing 8K, working with multiple files and music and different graphics and color grading and layers on top of layers inside of your editing? That's where you see the difference with the M2 Ultra. And I would say over the M2 Max, which I've also been playing with, there's about a 15 to 20% difference for most things. Sometimes it's a little bit more and sometimes it's more on average, but that's kind of the basis. So for professionals out there, that 15 to 20% more is actually a really good thing and that actually saves them time and saves them money. And compared to the M1 Ultra, well, let's go to Alex's office and he'll talk about that right now. All right, guys, we are with Alex now from White Coat Productions, right? Yeah, correct. White Box yeah. Studios is where we were at when we opened uh, the video. Now we're here in front of the M2 Ultra, mm -hmm. the Mac Studio, and uh, you do a lot of these projects, After Effects, Cine 4D, all this yes. kind of stuff, right? Correct, yeah. So you've been playing with this, what are your thoughts? We have been playing with it. So actually the, the same specs that we have in this one is the same specs that we have in our one. Really? Our old one. Okay. Uh, one to eight gigs of, of RAM, mm -hmm. uh, same, same as here. So uh, we ran some tests, yep. everything was rendered locally. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, actually, because you're gonna show the screen here, yeah. this um, timeline right here, Unfortunately, you won't be able to see the visuals because it's actually a, actually a live project right now that we're delivering to clients. Sure. So it's a real project. <laughs> it's not this benchmark or nothing like that. It's an yeah. actual project for the real world. And that's what we wanted to talk to you about because instead of just doing benchmarks, mm -hmm. which a lot of people have been doing to showcase the power of the M2 Ultra, yeah. we're doing real world work. Correctly. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just add it to the render queue, uh, and you know we'll carry on talking. Of course, as yeah. you can see, we've been doing some tests already. Different. Yes. This one, I believe, it was uh, rendering uh, through Wi-Fi wow. as well. This one, then we did a first kind of test of render something locally. Jeez. Now, for the for the premise of this video, we're just going to render it again. Okay. Uh, and of course, we'll select the output. Uh, we're just going to put it to the desktop for now. Mm -hmm. Again, everything is is working locally. So all this issue, all this stuff in here is local. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing is uh, in any other drives, which okay. actually makes it even faster for everything, anyways. So now we're rendering. This is going to kind of carry on going for a while now, five six minutes. Mm. Uh, well, more or less six minutes. Maybe this is faster. You never know. And it's only using 37% of the 128 yeah, yeah. gigs of RAM on Correct. this right now. For, the for this one, right, as well, is like we obviously have Premiere Pro open as well. Mm -hmm. So we're really kind of trying to like do multiple things at the same time. Right. So maybe for this time, maybe we use Premiere Pro at the same time. Sure, why know. not? We could. <laughs> yeah. So I talk about this project. This is a documentary that we shot in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, this documentary was shot with the Red Komodo and Canon R5, okay. a, a mixture of 8K. Uh, from Canon, uh, 4K, 100 frames a second from the Canon camera as well. Right. And of course, a uh, uh, red raw yeah. uh, at, six, at 6K from the Red Komodo. Nice. Mm. I'm noticing the playback on this is a little bit slower, but obviously because we're yes. rendering out on After Effects. Correct. Right? And this has a bunch of things. Okay, so this has like some red raw footage in one, some of these layers. It has uh, rendered uh, 6K, 4K, 8K um, files from uh, Resolve as well. Okay. So it has a mixture of things. So actually, it's playing pretty smooth right there, right? Yeah, it actually, yeah. It just kind of like took a little bit while for the machine to catch up. But all of this, right, is different. It was a whole series for multiple countries, uh, all for Meta, uh, all about AR and VR. Scrubbing's good on it. Yep, yeah, definitely. Of course, we render it, and then, yeah, that was uh, the result, four minutes, 15 seconds. So still kind of very impressive. That's right, and also we tried it on the M1 Ultra as well. What was that around the M1 Ultra? 538. 538, a minute? And 35 seconds faster. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. There is a definite increase on the M2 Ultra, as we would come to expect. Mm. It's significant. If at the moment, right, this timeline is uh, nine seconds long, and it's a minute, 35 seconds or so, mm. 20 something seconds right. faster, right? So if we're rendering something that's gonna be 45 seconds to a minute, then that different that will make all the difference. True. So let's say this is 10 seconds, right? So it's already about, let's say just, you know, if it's yeah. 10, 15 percent faster in these 10 seconds, then that does make the difference across a bigger, longer project. All right. We talked offline also about the displays because this is interesting because I also yeah. got the studio display to, to test out with this. And, you know, I have, you know, 
other professionally calibrated displays. What are your thoughts on that? A lot of clients will, uh, again, this is down to preference. I think a sure. lot of people out there in, 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 the, in the same industry will have their own kind of like uh, workflow. Sure. That's, you know, been, it's been instructed by professionals with many, many more years of experience than, than I will ever have. He's being humble. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but you know, I actually took a course on beauty color grading and it was uh, by Dado Balentic. You can look him up, he's IMDB, he's great. Mm -hmm. uh, he's amazing. One of the things that he, that he mentioned on the course mm -hmm. was that when he does his, um, his projects with clients, yeah. he sends them an iPad. Ah. And the reason why he sends them an iPad is so that they can see exactly what the color, color grading wants them to see. Gotcha. So if the red is going to be a certain thing, then the client will see you know, the same color. Right. There's not going to be a color shift because Apple screens, not just monitor, Apple screens are mm -hmm. all kind of like very well kind of like calibrated. Right. So you, you, on, the, on the iPhone, you're going to see exactly the same thing as on the iPad. And of course, it's beautiful kind of like Apple monitors as well. At the moment in-house, in, uh, in we have a, a combination of BenQ professionals yep. or photographers or something like that. Yeah. That they've been calibrated to stand, uh, standards, but we also have Apple. So, uh, and since we changed to the Apple monitors, because mm. uh, we had this issue where some clients were saying the colors are a little bit off. And sometimes between a motion graphic designers working on different monitors and, and, and our producers and editors on different things, right. we all see different colors. Gotcha. So what we did is we just went and we switched to, so well, we bought new monitors. These monitors have been Apple monitors and now there hasn't been an issue any color issue because we all see in exactly the same colors. Most people are looking on their laptops or they're looking on their phones and they're, they're you know, consuming content on mobile mm -hmm. devices for the most yeah. part, right? Yeah, correct. The yeah. content that we create is for mobile devices. Right? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, uh, the client signs off on things that they see on the mobile phone, things right. that they see on the laptop. Um, and yeah, so that's where the, most of the content that we produce goes to. Okay, Yeah. When it, when it comes to like uh, kind of global TVCs are going to be on TV. It's a whole different ball game. Right. But for quick social uh, media type of content, then yeah. Okay. Lower scale. All right. Cool. All right, Alex. Well, uh, you know, thank you so much for taking time out out of your day and out of your week to actually play with this machine. I really appreciate it because I know you guys have got a lot of projects on hand. And yeah, guys, this is uh, from an actual producer's usage and showing showing you guys some uh, sample footage as well and also some of my fun stuff that I was doing. But I want to give you, just say thank you once again for just the time, man. I really appreciate it. Because I know we got into your studio last week, we were shooting that stuff, and even this, it just means a lot. Really appreciate no it. No worries. And thank you for showing us the machine. No, nah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit of poison, you know. It goes back, I can't keep it, so it's, it's gone, you know, after this. But uh, I'll be back to my MacBook Pro, which I'm happy with. I like the yeah. MacBook Pro. The M1 Max has been fantastic for me. So, all right, guys, that's it for the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Once again, big thanks to Alex, Peter, Choi, AKA The Lost Kuma, uh, JB, who was behind the camera when we were shooting earlier on this. And thank you to all of you out there watching this video as well. Let us know in the comments section below any questions you have. Alex will try to answer them for you as well. I'll try to answer them for you. Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. Also, uh, do you guys have an Instagram account? We do, but we're never active because we never... You're a producer. You're just creating content. Just... We don't need it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll put your, your own personal Instagram account so as well awesome. on there so people can check you out. That right, guys, take care, mm -hmm. stay safe, and we'll chat to you soon.